9 Market Wizard Trading Tips that will help you become a better trader. So hello, welcome back and after my last video where I presented the stop loss tips from one of the market wizards, I got a lot of good feedback and I wanted to continue this little series. Let's see where it is going and today I picked nine of the most important and most helpful trading tips that the market wizard shared in the various trading books or, on, or in interviews and I will explain to you how to use them and how to apply them in your own trading. So let's start with the first one. I think this is from Bruce Kovner and the quotes that I picked are from various traders from the Market Wizard series um, like Bruce Kovner, Paul Tudor Jones, Linda Rushke and others as well. And the first quote goes as one thing that is absolutely critical. You have to be willing to make mistakes regularly. There's nothing wrong with it. Making your best judgment, being wrong, making your next, next best judgment. And I think this is something that I keep talking about also in our masterclass and Moritz wrote an article about this that trading and perfection they don't really match and as traders you have to be very comfortable not being perfect and not even trying to pursue perfectionism in your trading because in trading we are dealing with a lot of uncertainties and especially with the benefit of hindsight when you look at a past trade or at a, at a chart that you didn't trade or maybe did trade they are always coming a lot of what ifs or should ifs, would ifs and could ifs are always coming up and this can really drag you down as a trader and it can really create a lot of mental uh, chatter, pressure, anxiety and just frustration because well there's always a trade that you could have managed better, a, a trade that you should have gotten in earlier, a position that you should have uh, managed um, differently or a position that you should have cut earlier and so on and so forth. So it's really really important that you have a very sound trading plan before you get into a trade, know exactly why are you in the trade, where are you going to get out, where are you going to take a loss, where are you going to take a profit and how are you going to size your position and then you follow the, the plan and then everything else is out of your control and also one other thing is that you should never judge your trading system on a trade to trade basis. I see it time and time again that traders take a trade then they see they could have made more money or could have done something differently to avoid a loss and then they're going to change their approach on the next trade and this enters or this makes them enter a vicious cycle where they are always chasing their own tail. They're always making adjustments um, on a trade to trade basis just because of what they've seen on the last trade and they are never having any consistency in, your tra in their trading. So it's really, really important that you are ready to make mistakes. Don't try to trade perfectly. It won't happen. You won't get there. Just being okay with following your plan and just make sure that you understand that all you can do is really follow your plan and the rest is out of your hand. The next quote is, first, I would say that risk management is the most important thing to be well understood. Under trade, under trade, under trade. Whatever you think your position ought to be, cut it by half. And this is, yeah, risk management is something that is often neglected because it's not as fancy as looking at technical analysis or how to enter a trade. But risk management is really, really um, what what is causing a lot of um, issues and especially the the quote mentioned under trade under trade under trade which means you should trade less and also you should um, trade smaller sizes there will come another quote later on where i will go into this a little bit deeper but in the beginning understand that um, you should not focus all your energy and all your attention on just entries and finding better trades but really understand how risk management impacts your trading decisions and risk management is in the end what drives your account growth, how fast it will grow, uh, how fast you will be able to recover from losing streaks, also how fast you will dig yourself a hole in the losing streak. The bigger the position size, obviously people always look at just how much money they could make, but um, what they neglect is how much money they will lose during a losing streak. And protecting mental capital is in my opinion much much more important you can always get back more money you, uh, some some way 
But once you've lost your mental capital uh, in a big drawdown, in a, in a big loss that shouldn't have happened because you neglected your risk management, um, this is very, very hard to recover. And I've seen many traders quit trading, um, not because they completely blew their account, that was not the main issue, but because they just lost their mental capital. They, it, trading just became so frustrating uh, and they just couldn't take it anymore. The third quote is, the most important rule of trading is to play great defense, not great offense. It's always easier to get back in than to get out. And this is something that I keep telling my students as well. On Twitter or on Instagram or everywhere on social media, you can always see people um, bragging about their big trades and taking the big obvious moves and big obvious trades. And everybody can do that. Everybody can take those big trades that are very, very obvious. However, the real problem and the real difficulty of trading is usually um, when those big trades are not, when they are not present, when the market isn't moving a lot, then the trader needs to sit on their hands. The trader needs to be very, very selective. The trader needs to cut their losses quickly when the trades are not working out. And this is way, way more important. I see many traders lose so much money on trades they should not be in or they could have managed a little bit better that the good trades, when they come around, they won't be able to recover from, from the losses. So they need to ju um, jack up their risk management, take bigger positions, and again, enter a vicious cycle. So it's really, really important that you understand um, when not to trade. You need to understand how to be very, very selective in your trading. What is the difference between a high probability trade set up in your book and a low probability set up in your book? And then you need to make sure that you take setups and trades that are, yeah, that are just high probability and focus on um, your process. The next one, quote number four, everybody gets what they want out of the market. Um, this is something that many amateur traders don't understand and it's just a simple sentence many people will brush over, but it's really, really important. Not everybody really wants at the subconscious level to get rich. There are people who really are just looking for excitement. Maybe you have a, have a day job where things are a little bit dull. Maybe you have a family life where there is some stress and some struggles and you want to have something in your life that brings you excitement. Uh, maybe you are stuck in a rut and then you stumble over trading and trading will fulfill this um, this desire for something that is lacking in, in your life. And there are many traders that deep down inside, they are just in it to, to feel the excitement within them, to feel the thrill that comes from risking uh, and making big bets and taking trades that are too large and seeing their account go up and down like crazy. So really understand what do you really want out of the market? What is the, is the need and the desire that you are trying to fill uh, with trading? Is it um, excitement? Is it thrill? And if you think that this could be the case for you, look to fulfill this need somewhere else in your life. Maybe uh, try to pick up a different hobby or try to mix things up uh, in general in your life. That's really, really important and something that many traders overlook. Quote number five. Traders focus almost entirely on where to enter a trade. In reality, the entry size is often more important than the entry price because if the size is too large, a trader will be more likely to exit a good trade on a meaningless adverse price move. The larger the position, the greater the danger that trading decisions will be driven by fear rather than by judgment and experience. So again, trading size and risk management position size is something that is often overlooked because as the quote says in the first sentence, traders focus almost entirely on where to enter a trade. Whenever or most of the time when I talk to a trader, they always, they just ask me, okay, how do I find better trades? What is the, the secret to finding better entries? What is the moving average setting that will signal you a better trade? What is the, <clears throat> the trend line or the horizontal line or how do you use supply and demand to find better trades? And then once you are in the trade, you have no clue about what to do because you have spent all your energy and time just looking at how to get into a trade. And you don't have any clue what to do once you're in a trade and also you have never really looked at sizing a trade. And sizing a trade, as this quote suggests, is really going to influence how you manage your trade. Because if the position is too big, 
you will be <coughs> sorry you will be scared out <coughs> very easily if the position is very very meaningless and very small which is something that many <coughs> traders with small trading accounts struggle with then you will be more loose with your trade you will not exit the trade at the take profit but you will try to push it further or when the trade moves against you and the trade is very small you the, the position is very small because your account is very small you will leave the trade open because the loss doesn't mean anything and having a, sm a trade that is too small is just as bad as having a trade that is too large because taking a large loss is often also dangerous or scary um, and many traders postpone the decision because they don't want to close out the loss because for them it means that they have lost the money it's it's gone it's that's not coming back so really understand that sizing your position and looking at position size is very very important because it influences how you interact with your trade how you react to price movements and what you're going to do about the trade quote number six staring at the screen all day is counterproductive he believes that watching every tick will lead to both selling good positions prematurely and over trading he advises traders to find something else preferably productive to occupy, uh, to occupy part of their time to avoid the pitfalls of watching the market too closely. This is an excerpt from the market wizards or the hedge fund wizards, I think, um, and a summary and a recap of one of the, the interviews from Jack Schwager. Um, so I keep saying this time and time again, staring at a screen all day is not helpful. The myth that more screen time is going to make you a better trader is totally wrong. I see it day after day after day. The people that watch charts the most are the ones that usually have the worst results. You need to be very, very clear about when you are going to watch your charts, what are you going to do while you do that, and you need to be very, very productive with your chart time. So what I recommend and what I do is I play, plan my trades in advance, I write trading plans, I know exactly when to get in, where to get out, then I wait until my price alarms go off, and then I will um, examine if this is a trading opportunity or not. It takes a few moments. I don't need to look at my charts more than 20 to 30 minutes a day maximum. And then once I'm in the trade, I have placed my stop loss, my take profit. I will close the chart and I will do something else. You don't need to babysit your trade. The market can do what it's going to do anyway without you. And looking at a chart or looking at your broker, it will lead to a lot of bad trading decisions because you're always seeing your broker account go up and down the trade moves back and forth and especially if we remember the last point if you have a position size that is too large that's going to completely mess with your head so reduce your screen time try to be more productive with your screen time know exactly what you are going to do when you look at this chart avoid randomly flipping through charts because you just don't know what to do and you haven't done your trading plan and you're just trying to hunt down some trading opportunities Quote number seven, I was convinced whatever was wrong was wrong with me and not with the market. So this quote talks about taking responsibility and really acknowledging that it is really up to you. Don't blame the market. Don't blame your broker. Don't blame the news. Don't blame insider trading or don't blame the people on Twitter that gave you a wrong idea. In the end, it was you that decided to pull the trigger. It was you that decided to stay in the trade. It was you that decided to cut the trade. It was you that decided to size the position the way you did. And in the end, you need to take full responsibility. Really understand that whatever happens, it is up to you. You made the decision in the end to, to get engaged or to not pull the trigger. Whatever it is, understand that whatever is happening to you, it is because of you. This is going to bring a lot of personal power into your trading. And you can also apply it to your life. Don't just become a victim of the circum circumstances around you, but really understand that whatever happens is happening because of you. And then at the same time, understand the implications of that, that you are also the one in the driver's seat. You can change things around because if things happen because you did the decision, you can make better decisions or you can just make different decisions that will lead to different outcomes. So this is going to be a very, very big mindset shift for some traders once they take full responsibility and they are not accepting to be the victim anymore. Quote number eight, I truly feel that I could give away all my secrets and it wouldn't make any difference. 
most people can control their emotions or follow a system. And this quote, I think there was a similar one from Dennis Richards that he said he could publish his exact trading rules in a newspaper and no one would follow it. And this is so, so true. Um, and when we look at something else, for example, when you look at the health and um, the fitness industry, it is very, very simple how you get into shape. You eat better, you eat less sugar, you exercise more and you watch your diet a little bit. It's super simple. This is a guaranteed path that will almost always and 99.999% lead to um, just becoming more healthy <clears throat> and losing weight. In the end, look around you. Almost nobody or very, very few people are really super fit because the knowledge and execution are two very, very different things. It might seem simple or it might is or it may be simple, um, but it doesn't mean that it's easy. And this is very, very important. So when it comes to picking up a system, really understand that, again, don't make a, a quick judgment that maybe a system isn't working or the system isn't bro or the system is broken, it's flawed. Um, really understand that you, the trader, is always the weakest link in the whole trading business. And then understand that you can also change it. You need to work on yourself. You need to improve yourself. And more than just working on the technical aspect of trading, more than just working on finding a better trend line or finding a different way to draw pivot points or whatever, or Fibis, uh, Fibonacci's or whatever, look at how you can improve yourself, how you can be more disciplined, how you can identify your weaknesses as a, as a person. Where, where do you lack things? Um, where can you work a little bit better on yourself? And this will have a much, much bigger impact on your trading than looking at different moving averages or Fibonacci's or whatever. And the last one, always understand the risk reward ratio of the trade is as it is now stands, not as it existed when you put the position on. Um, this is something that we talked just yesterday in our masterclass that when you enter a trade, you have a certain reward to risk ratio, but as soon as the price moves, the reward to risk ratio changes. When the price moves in your favor, the reward to risk ratio is obviously worsening because now you have less extra to gain and you have more to lose because the price is closer to your target and further away from your stop loss. So there's more to lose and less to gain. The worst point of a trade, and I think there has been a quote um, as well about this, is the moment before the price hits your take profit because there's only a little bit extra to gain and a lot extra to lose. So really ask yourself always when you make a trade management decision, how much is there to gain? How much is there to lose? And I apply those principles for news trading or weekend trading, for example. So let's say I'm in a trade and it's Friday night and the market is about to close, but my trade is almost at my take profit target. Just a few points are missing. What are you going to do with this? Then I ask myself, okay, how much is there to gain and how much is there to lose? Obviously, if I leave my trade open over the weekend, I introduce weekend risk and gap risk and spreads and all of that stuff. <clears throat> and what is the what is the potential reward? Just a little bit extra if the price makes it to the take profit target. But there's a lot to lose because my trade has come all this way um, towards my take profit target. So I would close my trade prematurely before the weekend if the market is very close to the target. If on the other hand, the price is somewhere in the middle between the, uh, the target and the stop loss, I may leave it open if the weekend risk is acceptable because, well, there's the amount of how much you can gain and how much you could lose is roughly similar. So looking at evolving um, and developing reward to risk ratio and understanding risk and reward in, a, in a, a dynamic way is going to help you as well with your trading. And that's it. Nine tips from the market wizards. Let me know if you like those. Also, make sure to leave um, a thumbs up, a comment below this video to help me and my channel to grow more, to reach more traders. And I will make sure to make more videos if you keep supporting me.